What's going on and welcome to the team selection video for game week 17. The game weeks are coming thick and fast, so in today's video, we're going to have a look back at how a team went in game week 16. We're going to talk about the key stats, all the information that we need to know ahead of game week 17, who are the teams and who are the players that we should be targeting. Then we're going to talk about my transfer plans, and right at the end, you will see my team ahead of game week 17. The deadline is just around the corner, so make sure you get all the information in that you need to make those key decisions ahead of game week 17. Drop a like on the video as well if you haven't already. Liking the video really helps out the channel. So if you haven't done so already, just go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe as well if you're new around here, and let's get into the video for Game Week 17. Before we have a look at my team and transfer plans for Game Week 17, I just want to talk to you really quickly about Manscaped. Now, if you're stuck for a Christmas present idea this year, we've only got a couple of weeks to go before Christmas, you don't want to get stung for getting to get a Christmas present or trying to get something at the last minute. Manscaped are the world leaders in below-the-belt grooming, and they have you covered this holiday season. Now available in your country, join the 4 million million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to keep their trees trimmed and ornaments polished. Make sure those jingle bells are looking nice and polished this holiday season. So go to manscaped.com and use the code INZAGI at checkout. You will get yourself 20% off plus free shipping. Now, I have to talk about my own experience with Manscaped. I like to keep the men's grooming fairly consistent, as you can see, but it's not just on the face that I like to keep nice and groomed. For a long time, I was using the same razor on my face that I was in other parts of my body. You don't want to be doing that. You want to keep the downstairs completely separate from the upstairs. So do yourself a favor. Go across to manscaped.com and use the code INZAGI at checkout. That's I-N-Z-A-G-H-I at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. All right, let's have a quick look at how the team went in game week 16. Let's talk about the good first. Rudiger with nine points despite conceding two goals. Two assists for two penalties. Pretty jammy, but I'll take it. Alonso with an assist as well. So it's nice. A lot of people had Reese James. Didn't get any points. He's been terrible the last few game weeks. But having Rudiger and Alonso did really benefit me this game week. Getting the points despite losing the clean sheet. Cancelo with the seven points. Although his yellow card means that he is suspended for game week 17. He will miss that match against Leeds. Which would have been a great match to have Cancelo in. Salah, captain, delivered again. Ronaldo, if you went for the Ronaldo. Now, though, Captain, you got a little benefit there over Salah. He came in for me, downgraded Son last week to Jacob Ramsey on the bench with two. Ronaldo comes in, gets the goal, max bonus for nine points. So some good scores, but also some pretty bad ones as well. Guaita, every single time he loses out to Ramsdale, it hurts my overall rank. Ramsdale is the Martinez from last season. And I was on Martinez fairly early last season, so I didn't really understand the frustration. But this season, I completely get the frustration at Ramsdale. The bad continues with Reese James. I think he's only got a total of one point in three game weeks since I brought him in. So he's been completely terrible and frustrating for me, Reese James. But Chelsea do have some nice fixtures coming up, so I think his stay in my team might be a little prolonged. Jota, the cameo from Jota off the bench meant that Mbumo's nine points stayed on my bench. Very frustrating. And then coming out in the Josh King versus Emmanuel Dennis debate, I was on the side of Josh King. Obviously, Dennis scored and got the points in that game, outscoring Josh King yet again. If you're on Dennis, congratulations, but Josh King losing out there. So a mixture of good and bad, 62 points and a red arrow of less than 1%. So Almost a gray arrow, if you can call it that. Inside the top 1 million for most of the game week, Crystal Palace losing the clean sheet, Gallagher going big, meant that I was pushed back outside the top 1 million to 936 points. All right, before we have a look at my transfer plans and who I'm thinking of bringing in and what my team is looking like for 17, for game week 17, I thought we'd just have a look at some player data first. You can see on screen player data from game week 16. So just the most recent game week sorted by shots in the box. And Connor Gallagher 
up there with four shots in the box against Everton. Three chances created, but seven shots in total. He got a monster 15-point haul. And you can see in the bottom of the screen, we've got Conor Gallagher's average positions per game week on screen. Game week 16 in green, obviously, is the most recent game week. A few game weeks ago, people were talking about Conor Gallagher kind of playing like a CDM. And you can see on screen, game weeks 14 and 15 were two of the deepest positions that he's taken up all season. But this game week with Cheku Kiate and Will Hughes in behind Gallagher, it meant that he was able to play in that more advanced attacking midfield role and it paid dividends for Conor Gallagher owners with 15 points. Looking at the next four fixtures, if you have Conor Gallagher, he is a strong hold right now and he's even a potential transfer in at just 6.1. He's got Southampton and Watford, which in a moment we'll see struggling defensively in recent times. He's got Tottenham away in game week 19, I believe it is. But then he's got Norwich the week after. So three out of the next four game weeks looking really nice for Conor Gallagher owners. And if he continues to play in this advanced position, I think he will be someone that we're looking to get back into our team. Saka there as well is emerging as someone who we might need to keep an eye on. Arsenal's attacking data has improved dramatically recently. Ronaldo, he's always going to get shots off Always going to get shots off in the box as well. It's great to see him get the goal, even though United didn't look too strong against Norwich. They have improved defensively. I think a lot of it is down to De Gea playing well, but I haven't seen too much from United in an attacking sense right now to kind of justify getting in a Jaden Sancho or a Marcus Rashford, despite them being atop of the fixture ticker for the next six or seven game weeks. Jesus and Bernardo Silva there, encouraging signs for Bernardo Silva owners getting some shots off inside the box. Grealish at 7.6 is coming into our thoughts now. It looks like Gundogan might be out for a little bit with a back injury. So if you don't want to go the Bernardo Silva route, Jesus or Grealish are offering decent value. Tomiyasu as a defender, he's someone that I'm thinking about bringing in. If you don't have Ramsdale, Maybe going Tommy Asu for the clean sheets might be a way to go. And then Jota with two shots inside the box despite a short cameo just shows how good Liverpool are and how good positions Jota is getting into despite limited minutes in that game. But interesting to see Conor Gallagher, his position in, in game week 16 and the fixtures he has to come. Let's look at some team data ahead of game week 17. So this is the last four game weeks sorted by expected goals conceded. So it's showing us the teams at the top of the table who are the worst defensively across the last four game weeks. And conversely, the teams at the bottom of the table are the ones who are doing the best defensively. And interesting to note that Watford, Leicester, Newcastle, and Southampton have been the four worst defences in the last four game weeks. Ranieri seemingly cannot answer the questions of Watford's defence right now. He's getting something out of them from an attacking point of view with Dennis and King looking good. But defensively, Watford keep conceding chances and they keep conceding goals. Minutes per big chance conceded every 30 minutes or so. So Watford are conceding close to three big chances per game, which is what Norwich were conceding early on in the season when they were deemed the whipping boys. So I think Watford right now would be, along with Newcastle, two of the biggest whipping boys in the league. Leicester's defense, that was only their second clean sheet of the season against Newcastle. So I don't think Leicester's defense have really turned a corner just yet. They've got some defensive injuries as well. Johnny Evans went off early in that game. Indeedy might be back playing at center back or Amati if he is available. So some worries for Leicester City right now. Southampton, they have a bit of a goalkeeper crisis. So Southampton aren't looking too strong defensively either. United are fairly high up there in terms of expected goals conceded. They haven't conceded too many though with just three. So it goes to show the form De Gea is in right now or how wasteful their opponents have been. I think Norwich were quite wasteful against them in game week 16. But then we've got Liverpool and City. Tottenham have only played two games in the last four, but Liverpool and City there as the two best defences for all teams who have played four games in the last four game weeks. So Liverpool and City continue to stand out as two of the best teams in the league. But Chelsea, they're quite surprising to see them mid-table. Their defence has not looked good recently, conceding seven goals in the last four. 
Okay, we've seen the defensive stats. Let's have a look at some of the team attacking data from the last four game weeks. Liverpool and City were saying that they're the two best defensive teams. They're also the two best attacking teams. Arsenal's attack, we talked about Saka before. If you've got Saka, I think he's a strong hold over the next few game weeks. Obviously, Odegaard has played quite well. Smith Rowe will come back into that team, but the Arsenal attack is looking good. Leicester are scoring goals, but they're also conceding goals, so there might be a few goals in any Leicester match. Wolves there down the bottom, just struggling to score goals lately. Wolves have not scored a goal in their last four game weeks. They've had a couple of tough matches against Liverpool and City, but to not score a goal is worrying signs. West Ham worryingly low as well. Hopefully for managers who have Antonio and Jared Bowen, we'll see an improvement in their expected goals over the next few game weeks as their fixtures look really nice. But right now, West Ham's attack doesn't look to be one to invest in. We're talking about Aston Villa. Yes, they have had some tough games, but look at Aston Villa, their third worst attack in the last four game weeks. People are talking about bringing in Ollie Watkins. He probably looks the best attacker from Aston Villa, but right now, if I was going to buy any player from Villa, I'd be more interested in their defense than in their attack. Manchester United there with only 46 shots in the last four game weeks. That's worse than Newcastle. That's worse than Norwich and Leeds. It's level with West Ham who are saying are not performing too well as an attack. So it goes to show further evidence, I think, that the United attack besides Ronaldo probably just to wait and see at this point. Let's look now at the fixture ticker to see which teams have the best and worst fixtures from game week 17 through to game week 21. Manchester United there sit atop of the fixture ticker. As I mentioned, I don't see enough in their attack to target them right now. I would be looking more to their defensive assets. De Gea and Dallo stand out to me. Alex Tellez is getting a run in the team, but I think Luke Shaw is much closer to getting that first team jersey back than Aaron Wambasaka is to getting a back from Dallo. So if you were going to invest in the United defense, I would go with Dallo or De Gea noting their nice fixtures to come. West Ham, their attack isn't looking too good right now, but look at the fixtures. We've got Norwich, Southampton, Watford, and Palace. I think a double up on Bowen and Antonio is probably too much at this point. I would wait to see a little bit more from their attack. If you did want to go the double up, maybe you could look at it in game week 18 or 19, but I wouldn't go with the Bowen-Antonio double up right now. Villa, their fixtures are quite nice, but as we mentioned, their attack isn't looking too good. I would go with one of their defensive assets. I really like the center backs and their involvement from set pieces, but target or cash offer great value as wing backs in the Gerrard system. Crystal Palace, we were talking about Gallagher before. Nice fixtures in the short term. City are playing Leeds, Newcastle, and Leicester. Some really weak defenses in recent game weeks. So it might be a time to start getting on some City assets. A lot of people already have Bernardo Silva or Phil Foden in their team. Gundogan is under a bit of an injury cloud. So if you did have Gundogan, wait on Pep Guardiola's comments from the press conference. But if I did have Gundogan, I would be thinking about moving him to a Bernardo Silva or Phil Foden. And I think with City's fixtures, it might be time to jump on one, if not two, of their attacking assets. Down the bottom of the screen, Newcastle, they have one of the worst defenses. And I think it's only going to get worse for them with Liverpool, City and United in the next three in terms of captaincy, game week 18, Liverpool are playing Tottenham. And that could be a time to target a Man City player playing against Newcastle. I'm thinking about João Cancelo. He will be suspended for City's game against Leeds. It's the perfect opportunity for him to get his rest, to come back in against Newcastle in game week 18. It could be a time for Cancelo captaincy as Salah plays Tottenham. Leeds as well. Rafinha keeps churning out performances. If you've held him this far, you almost want to hold him through to game week 20 when Leeds fixtures get nice again. Conversely with Chelsea, the next four fixtures, I could see them keeping at least two, if not three, clean sheets. Brighton, their attack hasn't been great. Villa might nick a goal, but again, their attack's not great. Wolves haven't scored a goal in their last four. And Everton, when Richarlison's not in the team, really suffer from an attacking point of view as well. So Chelsea's next four are nice, but from game week's 21, that's the time you want to be jumping off Chelsea assets. So it's helpful to just get a big picture here of who have some nice fixtures in the short term. Who should you be looking to target and bring in? Right now, I would be looking at a City attacking player or a defensive player from United West Ham or Aston Villa.
Let's have a look at how the team is shaping up ahead of game week 17. We've got Guaita in goals. I wish he was Ramsdale, but there's not too much I can do with only 0.3 in the bank. I don't have enough money to go to Ramsdale. Part of me, the stubborn part of me, thinks maybe that ship has sailed. He will continue to hurt me, but we'll just have to hope that in the short term, Guaita can get some clean sheets. Southampton have some real injury problems. So this is thanks to Fantasy Football Scout. If you're not a member, go and join Fantasy Football Scout. Become a member. You get access to all the best information. Southampton have some real injury problems right now. So Che Adams was missing in the game against Arsenal because of a hamstring injury, which is described as complicated, and that's never good for a hamstring injury. Both Adam Armstrong and Broya limped out of the defeat to Arsenal with muscle injuries. So right now we don't know the extent of those injuries, and we might not get an update before the game week 17 deadline. So there could be a big injury crisis for Southampton in that match against Crystal Palace, particularly for their forwards. And hopefully that means that there's a greater chance of a Crystal Palace clean sheet. In defense, we've got the Chelsea triple up. Cancelo is suspended, so he will miss out on that game. Chelsea triple up, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last, but with Everton at home, I am reluctant to sell any of these guys. Reese James has been underperforming, but in any game, he could explode with attacking returns. And I also think there's a high chance of a clean sheet in this match. Everton have some injury issues themselves, like Southampton. Richarlison is a significant doubt for that game. He has got a problem with his calf. Rafa Benitez was saying that they were trying to protect him at halftime with Calvert-Lewin out injured. Everton cannot afford for Richarlison to be out for a long period of time as well. And they don't want to take the risk of him aggravating that problem. Everton have a really short turnaround from playing Crystal Palace on the Sunday to the game week 17 match against Chelsea. So not heaps of time for Richarlison to recover. And with the busy fixture schedule to come, I'm not sure Rafa Benitez will actually risk Richarlison. I think he will miss out that game. And so far this season, when Everton have missed Richarlison, they have not looked good in attack. They've suffered in terms of their expected goal, shots in the box, and their attacking output. So if Richarlison's going to miss that game, Calvert-Lewin's already out. There might be a problem with Allen as well. Decore's on four yellow cards. Not that that's going to impact his availability too much, but there are problems right now for Everton. There's some talk about Rafa Benitez, his position as manager being under threat as well. So when a team has all those kind of questions and doubts coming into a match against Chelsea away, it's not a recipe for success. And so I am banking on a Chelsea clean sheet. Despite their recent defensive struggles, Chelsea, I think they've got a great chance of a clean sheet. Trent Alexander-Arnold playing Newcastle at home. There could be a big score on for the Liverpool boys in that game. In midfield, as I said, we've got Salah and Jota. The Liverpool triple up that is quite popular now in FPL. doesn't really get you too many points. It just kind of protects your rank. In Bumo, nine points stuck on the bench last game week. He does get a start this week. I would have played Cancelo, but obviously he's suspended. In Bumo coming up against Manchester United, they've won their last two games under Ralph Ragnick 1-0. But I think when you look at the stats... It's got more to do with David De Gea being in incredible form than United's defense being rock solid. Right now, David De Gea leads the way in terms of expected goals prevented. In the last four game weeks, he's prevented three goals. So David De Gea is in incredible form. How long can that continue? With some doubt around Victor Lindelof's availability as well. Eric Bailly loves an error in defense leading to a chance. Mbumo could be on penalties again. He took that penalty quite well. So I'm happy to start in Mbumo in game week 17 against Manchester United at home. And then up front, we've got Josh King, Ronaldo, and Antonio. A slight chance Ronaldo either comes off early against Brentford or is rested for that game. We've got quite a few matches in quick succession now. And obviously, he did play that match against Norwich, but I'm going to start him anyway. Right now, I think he will play, but obviously, there is some doubt when we're talking about multiple matches in the same week. Antonio playing Arsenal away, hoping he can wipe out the Ramsdale clean sheet. And Josh King, if we're looking at the stats in terms of expected goal involvement, I know that was a hot topic this week on Twitter, but Josh King and Ronaldo sit in the top four for all forwards in terms of expected goal involvement across the last four game weeks. 12 shots in the box is encouraging for Cristiano Ronaldo. Josh King, I'm hoping he doesn't play out wide on the left. Dennis did look good playing centrally in the game against Brentford, but Josh King having to drop back and do defensive work, it's just not his game. I'm really hoping Ranieri 
plays Josh King through the middle. From an FPL point of view, I think Josh King looks way better playing through the middle than having to play out wide and drop back and do defensive work. That means on the bench, we've got Cancelo. Ramsey from Aston Villa coming up against Norwich. Might be a temptation to play Ramsey. He didn't offer too much in the game against Liverpool, but he has scored a goal in the last few game weeks. But Gerard might play him up front. So a decision there whether I go with Mbumo or whether I play a Ramsey or Sissoko away to Burnley. Right now, though, I am leaning towards playing Mbumo. All right, so that's the team ahead of game week 17. Currently, no transfers have been made, and I don't think I will make a transfer. I'm waiting on some COVID news. David Ornstein over on Twitter, who works for The Athletic, was talking about some COVID issues within the Manchester United and the Aston Villa team. So I'm going to keep an eye on the news coming in right up until the Game Week 17 deadline. If there is news that Manchester United's team or their match against Brentford will be affected due to COVID and it could be postponed, I will make a transfer and I will probably take a hit. I've only got one free transfer. And the move would probably be Ronaldo out to a forward that enables me to bring in a Man City midfielder, either for Mbumo or for someone like Sissoko or Ramsey. So right now, leaning towards banking, unless we get some significant COVID news, which means that any of the games for my players are under threat. That's the team selection video for game week 17. Make sure you let me know in the comments below how you went in game week 16 and what your transfer plans are ahead of game week 17. But thanks so much for watching as always. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.